Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. There's been a huge NXT TakeOver War Games announcement match thing. I am Jobber Peak Quinnell. Well, this is housemate Simon Longdon because Laurie and Ollie are recovering from their Crown Jewel livestream last night and Luke is in Japan, so... Here we are, by We're, default. By default, it's me and Simon. Yay. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, please give us a like and a subscribe as well. Help us beat that YouTube alg algorithm and all that stuff. Share this video with your friends and your mum and your cat. Uh, get them all to watch, it'd be great. Um, but let's talk about, uh, obviously this is a pre-recorded video, so no super chats and all that stuff this time. Yay. Uh, let's talk about this huge War Games announcement that mm -hmm. happened on NXT. So it kicked off, it was set up pretty well earlier in the night with the opening match, which was Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae, um, which was a fun match, really fun match. Both of these are incredible in-ring talents. Yep. They always put on great stuff. Really, really fun match. Um, finish came in a really fun way where uh, Candice Ray looked like she was on top for once. She was actually going to beat Io Shirai and you know, finally get that victory over her. She goes for a, the lion salt off it. Shirai moves out the way. Lorray lands on a chair that was in the ring because Shirai brought one in, uh, lands on the chair, and Shirai gets the pin off it, which I thought was a really, really, mm -hmm. really cool finish. Um, but then after the match, Io goes and beats down um, Candice a little bit more after the match with Rhea Ripley running out to make the save, kind of building that friendship between Rhea and Candice a little bit and setting up Rhea having beef with Io as well mm. as the rest of the women's division as she's had before. So that was a really nice setup for what happened later in the night, which was the big kind of actual talking point. So it was after a match uh, which was announced last week, which was Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox versus the Kabuki Warriors. Mm -hmm. Now, the way this match even happened was Kai and Knox beat Shafir and Duke last week um, to set up this match. So they've already got beef with uh, Baszler's horsewomen. And then after the match, we'll talk about the actual match itself later on because that was a, a fun experience. Um, but then after the match... Um, the uh there was green mist was obviously involved because it's the it's the kabuki warriors and that's what they do now uh the um shana Baser comes out with the horsewomen come to like gloat about them getting beaten up and whatever they come out and Knox starts attacking Baszler as soon as she gets inside the ring. But then the numbers game happens and they get on top again. Baszler looks like she's going to do the arm break spot, which is done to Dakota Kai. But mm -hmm. this time it looked like she was going to do it on Tegan Knox. Rhea, Rhea Ripley comes back out again and distracts her so she doesn't, you know, break her arm. But before she can even get to the ring, Io Shirai comes out and attacks her from behind, payback for what happened earlier in the night. And then Candice Ray comes out to attack Io Shirai. Bianca Belair comes out. Everyone gets into a big, massive schmoz yeah. inside the ring. All the officials come out. It's getting all crazy. Whoa, what's going on? William Regal comes out on his little balcony thing that he's got. And he goes, you know what? I've got a real simple solution for this. War Games! And now we're getting, for the first time, a women's War Games match. The crowd were chanting War Games before he even made the yeah. announcement. They could they could see it coming. It was awesome. I love this. Yeah. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It was simultaneously very subtle storytelling, but also really in your face. I know, yeah. <laughs> Just like, like I said, even the fact that sometimes when you can anticipate something coming, it kind of ruins it. But mm -hmm. actually... The fact that the crowd would obviously like you had the four and four, and it yeah. was just like this is obviously coming. Come on, like actually was a great payoff, mm -hmm. and the way all these feuds have never, some of them have sort of, I guess they've not necessarily some of them become full blown feuds a little while ago, and then cooled off, and then heated up a little bit, and it's kind of like they've all managed to just keep having matches in and around each other and keep these loose. I guess they're not even alliances; they just have shared. Enemies, yeah, yeah, that's a and trip. you know, particularly Rhea Ripley, who just her thing is who she doesn't like <laughs> and has yeah. and has no feelings for who she does like, yeah. Um, and yeah, and to, and to have it all finally just coalesce like this brilliant booking, mm -hmm. um, kind of booking without it sounds stupid. Booking without feeling like you're you're seeing the booking happen in, in real yeah, time, like yeah. just it just kind of. It just kind of happened, and it felt very organic. You know, it wasn't. It was it wasn't really telegraphed almost until the very moment it happened. Exactly. Even though when you obviously look back, you go, "Oh, yeah, obviously." Yeah, obviously they were sitting. This but up, they did but... it. They gave everyone enough breathing space to kind of when it did finally happen. It was like, oh, 
brilliant. Yeah, it was like that light bulb moment. It's like, oh, that's why we've been seeing these things. Yeah. Now, obviously, like, we have uh, predicted, I think Luke made a prediction way back when, that he wants to see a women's war games match. And we've been saying, yeah. this women's division's getting really fleshed out. They're going to be setting up a war games match. But that was still speculation. That wasn't us saying, well, that's obviously where they're going. It was still speculation because it could very well have just been Rhea Ripley versus Shayna Baszler. And that would still would have still been yeah. very good booking. And to be honest, up until pretty recently, I still thought that's what... I thought they were going to add other people to the war games. Mm, yeah. Uh, and still keep that as the main... Mm-hmm. So, like, so, you know, they have managed to sort of keep, it, keep everyone on their toes in that sense as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's looking like it's going to be Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai, Rhea Ripley... Candice LeRae, and probably a fifth person that is not announced right now, uh, versus Shayna Baszler, Marina Shafir, Jessamyn Duke, Io Shirai, and Bianca Belair, is what it looks like. That's the way they were separated Mm -hmm. and staring off at each other. It got announced later in the night that Shayna Baszler and Rhea Ripley are going to be the team captains, so I'm assuming they're going to be, you know, picking people to be on their sides. I don't know whether it's going to be like a four on four or a five on five or, you know, if it is four on four, who's getting left out of this? If it is five on five, I'm guessing it would probably be like someone like Mia Yim would fill that fifth space for the, mm-hmm. you know, the baby face side unless they get someone down from the main roster or something for like a special one off, yeah. which would be super cool. I don't know who I'd want to go down. No, there's not that, I don't try to think if is there anyone who sort of whose connection would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Not really. Not with Rhea Ripley, no. I wouldn't say. Unless Ripley gets someone like Tony Storm well, to come so over. That, so that was the other thing. Uh, who's her... Um, uh, who's her... Uh, Niven, is it? Her partner down in the yeah, UK? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. could be another... I think Tony Storm would be... Because I think... The good thing about Tony Storm... Even though it makes less sense, and it does actually make almost no sense. Yeah. But what does make sense is sometimes it is worth just doing something for the pop. Mm-hmm. And I think this, I think she would get... A big reaction. I'm not yeah. sure you'd get this. Even though it makes more sense to do Niven, I don't think it, it would get the same mm-hmm. reaction. Exactly, yeah. Either way, this is, this is the perfect place to have someone debut mm-hmm. uh, and be immediately considered in the same tier. And, this, and also, by the way, kudos to the booking as well. For keeping everyone... Know what... This, this block of... Obviously, there's a hierarchy there and obviously... Uh, Shayna and Rhea are at the top of that, but there's not a there's a very very small distance between them and everyone else, right? Yeah. And that everyone else, that's a lot of people who are all coming out looking strong. They've all got very individual characters. They're managing to have matches against each other without ruining each other's mystique. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's very hard booking, and this is exactly the sort of thing I think everyone thought would be difficult to maintain with the two hours mm-hmm. on USA. But actually, it helped them flesh it, flesh it out more. Yeah. Actually, I think it would have been much harder with the original hour to allow, you know, you can't have, you know, them having that tag match against the Kabuki Warriors, you know, going 15, whatever it was, 15 minutes, yeah. nearly 20. Yeah. You can't have that in an hour-long show, especially when there's Finn and whoever. Like, so I think yeah, it's 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 been quite an incredible, <laughs> like... yeah. Days of just bit of just couple of you know, a couple of months whatever of great wrestling booking simple as yeah. well yeah exactly it's simple yet effective yeah and that's all you you don't need to overthink it yeah that's all it is we're just gonna make all these women look really really cool yeah. they are all really really cool we're gonna and, make them look cool and the th- really and we'll put them in a match I thought one thing that was really great that actually which I know is sometimes harder to do with the women's division just because the sort of physically they're a lot they're all much more similar i think than you get there's less sort of variance i think than mm-hmm. you get with the men's division at the minute um just uh, and i mean that just in terms of who they have as opposed to a more yeah. general comment but having someone like Rhea ripley like go chin to chin with shayna baser like she looks massive and hard <laughs> like do you know what I mean? she looks so badass <laughs> yeah. and like to and actually is a bit bigger than Shayna. Yeah. And I think it's that's an interesting dynamic in it, in of itself that when she comes out it's a, like there is a kind of ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this looks <laughs> these two are going to kick the hell out of each other. Yeah. Like it's it's a it's a it's quite a unique dynamic that they specifically have got. And I think Rhea brings that in space. As to Shayna, I I think Shayna is is one of the most underrated workers in the whole company at the minute. I mm-hmm. think the stuff she's like, the matches she's had have been 
consistently great whilst also actually being probably asked to do it a bit too soon. Mm. But and we've sort of seen her grow. Yeah. But with the title, which is really hard, and a title that was that is genuinely coveted and only given to very good workers. So I think mm. I think it's continued to put her on a platform is also great. I think she'll have. I think she still I think needs to be somewhat. She's not gonna. She's not necessarily like commanding matches, like calling them herself. I don't think at this point. Yeah. She's been generally speaking. She's getting people are getting great matches out of her as opposed to the way around. I yeah. think. I think this is another example of that where I think Rhea, her and Rhea can really work together really well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, it's so very I, exciting. I'm hoping that this War Games match then leads to a rhea Shayna match at the next TakeOver. The one, oh. the, well, the one that would be at Royal Rumble yeah. weekend. And this is also the great thing, which is that it makes sense specifically for this moment for them to all to have this fight because ultimately, you know, they've ended up in these loose alliances. They've all got sh- common enemies. However, all of them want to get a shot at the title. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. So yeah. as soon as, first of all, that sets up some kind of double cross that could happen. Yep. Heel turn, whatever it might be. That's an option. They don't even, but they don't have to do it and it would no. make no difference. Ultimately, all of these, all of these women are, as soon as that, as soon as War Games finishes, it just becomes them all competing to get the next shot after whoever wins out of Rune Shen. And like, Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how this should work. Exactly. It, it, there's such a well-fleshed out division and they all have a motivation that makes sense, which is, I want the title. I want to be the best. Yeah. So I want to get that. And this is the way to do that. It It's just logical, sensible booking at its best. Yes. And it just makes everyone look great. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All you have to do with wrestling booking is very simple. <laughs> yeah. Give... I think the problem is I think WWE tries to book through character too much. Mm-hmm. And I think what NXT does is a bit more the old school, which is because you don't you just you basically just say, well, you you want to do this, and then your character would have feelings about that. Yeah. As opposed to saying, well, because you're like this, then you would say this, and then uh, do you know I mean like it, yeah. it can't they often do it the wrong way around? Whereas mm-hmm. I think here they've just kind of gone, well, they all want to win the title, so I guess. Now, as their characters, they would probably have thoughts and feelings about that. Yeah. How would they react to that? And then they just do that. Exactly. That's exactly how you should do it. <laughs> exactly. It's almost as if they're real people. Uh, incredibly. <laughs> uh, a stark realisation. Yeah, I know. Uh, anyway, let's get on to the main portion of the show. I'm mm-hmm. thoroughly excited for that Women's War Games match. Uh, so like we said before, the uh, the show actually opened up with a musical performance yeah. from Poppy. Um, it was fine. It's all right. It's not really my thing. No, definitely not I, my only, thing either. You know why, though? Almost entirely because she does that uh, s- that sort of high-pitched voice. She's doing a bit. Yep. And I personally find that a bit inappropriate and annoying. But that's just me. <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah. It's kind of weird, I thought, that they used this for a random episode of NXT and not a takeover. Yeah. Bit it's, weird. It felt but... like... I wonder whether it's because they're going to... Was that actually them changing the Slipknot song to her because she was a different she started with a different song didn't she then went into yes so yeah. maybe that's what they're doing maybe they've run out of whatever license they had for that Slipknot song who knows um, bit weird but whatever that leads straight into an entrance from Io Shirai being played by Poppy um, which was alright it's cool yep she did her little yep <laughs> yep <laughs> she did uh wasn't really into it but it's whatever it's not my thing sure i'm sure loads of people enjoyed it um that's fine candace ray comes out afterwards and those two have a match which as we mentioned before was super duper fun really yeah. really cool there was a really there was one thing i did notice which they teased in the match doing two big spots mm-hmm. they were they teased an apron uh, an apron spot and they teased something off the uh top turnbuckle mm-hmm. and actually didn't go through with either of those spots they've teased them instead and I thought that was interesting because that actually at the time I was like, oh, shame that didn't go anywhere. Yeah. And then by the time the finish comes around hitting the chair, suddenly that now had the impact ahead. I think if they had done some if they had done some crazy backdrop on or German suplex onto the side of the apron, and suddenly the match wouldn't have had the same exactly. pace. It was actually quite yeah. it was some smart uh wrestling there. Yeah, because the finish, like we mentioned before, was Candice Ray going for a, a lion salt, missing, and because Shirai had got a chair, she lands on the chair, and Shirai just pins her straight off that, mm. no extra moves or anything. And 
I had no qualms with that being the finish. No. And, you know, that seems like a quote unquote weak finish because there was no like big move or anything. And it's, ju- and it's ah. just a chair shot kind of thing. It's whatever. But like, it made perfect sense for the match. Like there was, yeah. there was, there was no, when that finish happened, I wasn't like, oh, that made Candice look rubbish because they built up that sort of spot with the chair. They built up that the chair is going to be the thing that like end someone like they really built up Shirai went and got the chair and was like really gonna get with it and they built it up and the crowd were going no like you can't hit yeah. it with the chair and then the ref like grabs the chair off her so they built up the chair as like this big ending thing so then when Candace uh, hit it it was like oh that's the end yeah it's like this, this is the thing I think sometimes because everyone kicks out of everything now mm-hmm. I think sometimes that that gets used too often but the great thing about this match is, and any wrestling match is, you set your own context. Yeah. If you you can make anything seem like the biggest thing in the world, and you can create that payoff, and that's what they did. It was I was totally fine with it. And also, I want I do want to watch a world of wrestling in which landing face first on a chair from sort of seven feet up should be somewhat damaging yeah <laughs> and i was might be it. enough yeah to win a match I, i'm not against that yeah being a thing <laughs> exactly yeah um and then as we mentioned before rhea ripley runs out makes it safe she kicks the chair out of eo's hand because she'd picked it back up again which was cool uh she, she runs her off cool stuff great opener loved it yeah it, eo gets a great win stuff. again candice it was a great match anyway like they both oh, yeah. look great yeah both um, look great coming out i think it. candice is unbelievable she's great she's isn't she brilliant i love both of them uh, we get the announcement that it's going to be Undisputed Era. That's Kyler Riley and Bobby Fish versus Matt Riddle and Keith Lee, which is going to be mm. the main event of the show. Cool. I, I, well into it. I could watch Keith Lee wrestle forever. Forever. Yeah. I'm, I'm obsessed with Keith Lee. He's so good. Um, there was a little video package next for Finn Balor, which I thought was awesome. It was really cool. Using all the sort of TMZ style footage and mm-hmm. him being sort of in character. Yep. Throughout, you know, and there's also, I think, the same with all good ca- wrestling characters. There's clearly some truth in, oh yeah, in this character. This is sure he this he really is this pissed off, the way his run has gone. Yeah, and he's right to be, and it's honest, and it comes it, across. It, it, yeah. yeah, it's really really good. Yeah, he was thoroughly in character. There, he did an appearance on uh, like the backstage show that yeah. they've got now. Uh, and then, like you said, there was a TMZ interview, and they spliced all these clips together, and they showed video footage of his turn last week against Gargano and stuff like that. And there's like little quotes that were thrown, just like "Let's just say the prince is back." It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, gives yeah. me like those little like childish warm fuzzies. I'm like, oh, he said the thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's great. Um, uh, we then get an announcement that it's Pete Dunne versus Damian Priest rematch next week, uh, which they did a little uh, highlight saying here's how Damian Priest won before, mm. low blow and the and the thingy. Yeah. I will always say whenever Damian Priest comes up, that's he was previously punished from Martinez. Punished from Martinez. Yeah. Yes. Now the unfortunate thing is, as much as it, the name changes in NXT are what they are, mm-hmm. other than the fact that Punishment Martinez is the best wrestling name in the world. <laughs> and it's a damn shame that no one is now called Punishment Martinez. Yeah. It's just a shame. <laughs> I mean, his first name's Punishment, which is a bit weird. No, I think it's really it's it's really <laughs> cool. Uh, then we got Finn Balor coming out to do a promo. This was so good. This yeah. was amazing. So he comes out to do his entrance. The music comes in, not the you know not the full demon entrance or anything. Just the normal Balor music comes in, and he comes out. And when he done normally does his little woo with the hands thing in time with the music he does the first one and the crowd do it with him and then it changes to a spotlight on him and and then he just puts his hands down slowly and does his two finger his new japan finger gun things which was awesome so i'm hoping that that little hand wave thing was a one-off for this that's entrance. That's the last time, yeah. And that's the last time he's going to do it. And now there's no yeah. no hand waves for you, crowd. No. This is the thing. I think he now has to deny the crowd everything that was before. So in the in the video package before, there was a um, one of the sort of little sound bites from him was, you know, it's all fun and games and the fireworks are going and the pageantry, but, you know, but what about, you know, when it gets real? You know, that, mm-hmm. that kind of sentiment. And so, absolutely, so long as he's this version of Finn, never do the demon. Uh, Agree, 100%. And he shouldn't do, yeah, that should be the last time he does the thing with the hands. Like, uh, yeah, all of that. I yeah. think it was, it, uh, everything is now, he, I do think he's now fully fleshed out this character. And it's, he seems so confident in the role. Like, when he was, in, when he was on the main roster, um, oh, he was trying to call me. Um, when he was on the main <laughs> roster, 
I never felt like he was comfortable with that character. Yeah. His promos, I mean, I know obviously there's issues with scripting and stuff. They are what they are. Some people do struggle with that. Um, as in, uh, some people just don't react well to have words put in their mouth. Mm-hmm. I think he's a, clearly a good enough promo to not need that. Yep. Um, but yeah, he never seemed comfortable with his own skin. He never seemed super confident, I didn't think. Yeah. It always seemed like he was always, this was always one step removed from what he wanted to be doing. Whereas, whereas this was like, just the, the, the energy he had when he was speaking, like it was, I, it really was just, I was just like, this is, this is blowing, blowing out the water any promo work he's done before. Yeah, in absolutely, WWE. 100%, like, yeah. It's, and it's not even close. Yeah. Uh, so he comes out to the ring and the spotlight remains on him while he does his promo. And he's just saying, how things change, her. and he has this, like you said, totally new energy about him, totally new mm. aura. He looks, he, he felt seven foot, he just, he yeah. just was this, yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. And he says, two months ago, I'm laying down for what's supposed to be the hottest thing in the business just because he put on a new mask. I took off my mask and now I'm the hottest thing in the business. I was like, oh, yeah. oh God, that's a great line. Um, yeah. And he's saying, you know, everyone's got their opinions. The critics, the fans, are some tough guys on Twitter, on social media. Everyone's yeah. got their opinions. Um, he said, the problem is there's too many fans in the locker room when they should be sitting out here, pointing to the to the crowd. I don't watch this business. This business watches me. I'm like... Who are you? Yeah. Where has this come from? <laughs> it was unbelievable. Um, and then he, he specifically targets Johnny Gargano, and he's saying he's one of those, he's a fan. He should be out sitting in the crowd. He's not mm-hmm. a wrestler. And he's saying, you won't be Johnny wrestling anymore. You'll be Johnny watches wrestling the way it's supposed to be. And then just like walks off. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's yeah. so good. It was, it was, you know, the good thing, it was It was quite short. It's probably only two minutes. Yeah, there. tops, yeah. The the crowd reaction was interesting because obviously they're mad for Finn anyway. Yeah, there was a good, the thing I like about NXT. The NXT crowd normally is that they they are part of the show and they're knowledgeable and they often play their part in the show. Mm-hmm. They often know when they're supposed to boo and they boo and it yeah. creates. I think some of the best moments that happen in NXT, like apart with, from when it's anything to do with the Undisputed Era, because they're just too cool. You just got they cheer are too them. cool. You just but, cheer but for them. example, like you know. The way they in like the way Champa wasn't was had like genuine heat when mm-hmm. he first turned on Johnny Gargano, like those big moments where the NXT crowd have really gone along with the show. Yeah, when actually you know they would they really they and they eventually did end up obviously cheering a lot for Champa anyway. Of course, yeah. But I just think that often I think this was one of those moments where like they came out and it was like half and half like people were really booing Finn. Yeah, and then some were chanting and then. Uh, and then when he mentioned Johnny Gargano, Johnny Gargano got a boo from the crowd because yeah. <laughs> they were just really on board with Finn at this point. I yeah. think because he'd done the thing. It's it's difficult with a with a smart crowd. As soon as you do anything that kind of lifts the curtain on the business, mm-hmm. they're on your side straight away. Exactly. Yeah. And as soon as I do think with that crowd, as soon as you put yourself on one side of kayfabe and everyone else on the other, they will sort of boo everyone else. Yeah. You know, depending on which side these. So I do think that was just. It was just. I don't have any particularly strong feelings about it. I just thought it was an interesting yeah. interplay how the crowd sort of came in and out of their own character a little bit. And, exactly. But yeah. I, just, I think it's it's cool that this cat that his character is so. He's asking questions of this very smart crowd, you know, and I think that's great. I just I just thought the whole thing, the presence, the entrance, the spotlight was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the every every there was no. No fat on the promo. Yeah. It was just him saying exactly what he needed yeah. to say, laid out his motivations for why he's turned, why he doesn't like Johnny, and, oh, this is a new character. You should pay attention to this. Yeah. It was, it was perfect. Yeah. Um, we got a little video package uh, for Tyler Bate versus Cameron Grimes, which is going to be happening later on, which they set up last week with the whole fake out punch thingy me bob on Cameron Grimes. Uh, then we got Shane Thorne versus Bronson Reed. And just, y- you had a comment before this saying that someone had mentioned that it was there possibly in the running for their favorite <laughs> five less minute, than, less than five minute, minute match. match. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Just this was two so fun. Quite large, one particularly large Aussies just kicking the <laughs> hell out of it. I mean, the, the chop spot <laughs> it was brutal. I mean, yeah, it was... It was great. Yeah, just so much fun. This is, this is the thing that NXT has been able to continue to do, and actually, it's so, I think it's so become an important thing to do, which is that I think the competitive squash has become a real USP 
of the NXT brand. Mm, yeah. They they do them all the time. Yeah. You know, you look at the, the roster of Oni Lorkin and stuff. Like, the squashes they have, like, ultimately, this was kind of a squash. Mm-hmm. It was a five-minute match with one comeback that led to a big finish. Yeah. Him hitting his finisher, Bronson Reed hitting his finisher and Shane Thorne. But it was competitive. It was hard-hitting. Shane Thorne looked strong. But it was no denying who the winner was and who was the sort of... And I just think NXT are so good at booking those. Mm-hmm. And most of that is down to the performers, obviously. Oh, yeah. Because they just get that balance right. You know, no one's looking soft. No one... But you know who's gone over and you know why they've gone over. It's... it's I don't know where that, where that, whether that comes from. Just obviously there's a lot of experienced performers in NXT. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just think it's a brilliant thing that NXT do. And the fact that... It, this has now been something they've been doing for years now and it now it doesn't matter who they throw into those kind of spots these little five minute seven minute matches that are happening they work every time yeah and it doesn't matter who they throw in there I just thought, I just thought it was perfectly executed yeah it, it was absolutely amazing because Thorne came out Bronson Reed came out Bell rings immediately. Shane Thorne goes drop kick, drop kick, cannibal yeah. in the corner. I was like, oh, okay. Th- what are the this match like, is quick. What, yeah, the, I think the second one pretty much decapitated. <laughs> it properly hit him in the head. Yeah, <laughs> and then Reed immediately comes back towards the next skip and just and just lariats him, <laughs> and he does like a backflip off it. They do those massive chops, like you mentioned yeah. before. It was literally them just like, I am going to hit you as hard as I can. Is that okay? They go, yes. I will also hit you back <laughs> yeah. as hard as I can. Yeah. Um, there was a massive big kick and a suplex from Thorne. Some really stiff kicks. There was a giant German suplex from Bronson Reed. Just yeah. chucked him halfway across the ring. And then uh, he does this, like, driver thing where he gets his legs over his shoulders with his oh. head behind him. And then he just <laughs> literally just, like, sits down and drops him. It's I like, to, your to, head. I Matt. had to watch it. It was, ba- it was basically Hangman Page's finisher, mm-hmm. but but doing it sit out like a normal pile driver. Yeah. So... I presumed Shane Thorne's head went through the ring. <laughs> it was it was just I just didn't it was the thing when he had him like that, I thought, oh I wonder what he's gonna do here. And then he just as I was having that thought, he just dropped. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh god. <laughs> and then they had to that was a near fall. That wasn't even the finish. <laughs> And then Bronson heads to the top, but Thorne comes up and kicks him. And then he goes for like a, jumps up as if he's going to do like a, a Rana off yeah. the top. And then Bronson just goes, nope, just pushes him mid air. Spot like with his hand on his chest, just, yeah. just dr- like from a million feet. Yeah, just, <laughs> just threw him. No, <laughs> just pushes him oh, away. Hits a splash for the win. Oh, it was so fun. Would highly recommend going and watching that match. Yeah. Like you said, it's only a fight like five minutes. So, so fun. Yeah. That's um, the kind of thing they see. That's kind of thing they should just put a wholesale on the YouTube channel. Absolutely, yeah. Just 100%. put it up. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got Kathy Kelly, Dakota Sky, and Tegan Knox backstage. Uh, they were saying just hyping up their women's tag team title mm-hmm. match, saying they've been thinking about the women's tag team titles for a long time. Tegan said she can't think of a better way to do it than to win them with her best friend. And you could hear the crowd going, "Oh!" <laughs> in the background, it was so good. <laughs> Proper audible like cuteness. Uh, then we got that women's tag team title match. Yes. I thought this was so fun. Yes. This was great. Because there was some really fast paced action to start. Um, as came out, I hate the fact that the Kabuki Warriors theme, but we won't talk uh, about that. We've uh, done that enough. Yeah, it's. We constantly talked about it. It's horrendous. Please change it. Because she's not even a bloody pirate. <sighs> anyway, fast paced action to start. Kabuki Warriors took control and it went into an ad break. It was like, cool. Standard stuff so far. Came back, and Kabuki Warriors are still in control. Just taking down Dakota Kai, stopping her from getting a tag. Really cool, like, submissions, playing off the knee injuries that she's had and all Mm -hmm. that. Um, There was both of them constantly attacking, like, their knees constantly. It's a great story. Some really cool-looking submissions from Kyrie Sane. Uh, They amazingly just constantly cut off the tags from Kai to Nox every single time. Like, oh, she's getting close. This is the hot tag. No, it's not. This is the hot tag. No, no, it's not. Kyrie Sane had this awesome spot where she just started tanking hits like she was seven foot tall. She just goes, I'm going to hit, and she just goes... (laughs) Nope. Just started no Come selling. On. Nope. Pops. Hits her again. It's like, <laughs> nope. It's like, you're like four foot seven. Yeah. What's happening? It was awesome. And then it goes into another ad break with Kabuki Warriors still in control. It's like, this match is going long. Like, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. Came back. And then finally, Kai makes her comeback. She hits this massive scorpion kick onto Sane. And finally, she starts crawling her way over. She finally gets the hot tag onto Nox. And Nox just goes mental. Yeah. Just comes in, chokes, slam, knees, everything. It was awesome. Um, eventually the finish came 
uh, when she goes, uh, sorry, just before the finish, she went for a the shiniest wizard, uh, Tegan Knox's finisher. That got ca- counted into a knee bar from Asuka, mm-hmm. which was just such a smooth transition. Yeah. I loved it. Just it was going just for the, the knee and then grab. It's a shame that it was it's the awesome. wrong knee. Yeah, but it was still cool though. It was really cool, but it was. I think that was the one. That's the one thing. If you were to be, if you wanted to be an absolute knob, which you are being, which right I'm now. being. <laughs> In this review, you could say that perhaps she should have got the, the bad name. It still looked cool, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, but then Kairi Sane came to break that up. They had a quadruple down spot straight after, yeah. which was awesome. Um, and then it gets to the finish where Asuka uses the green mist while the referee's not looking, kicks her in the head. Kairi Sane does the insane elbow for the win. I thought they did a, an amazing job of covering up her face so the referee wouldn't see it. Mm. After they did the green mist, she went down face first, yeah. which was awesome. They did the insane elbow to the back of her head, and then as she's pinning her, she covered her, her face with her body so the ref couldn't see. I thought yeah. it's little touches like that that really make the green mist spot work. Yeah, I think Maybe. so. so. I, I, I just love how over the mist is. Yeah, I know. It's the crazy. Crowd the went crowd mad. went mental. Yeah. Cool, so it really it did come out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. She was just She just got randomly turned and just... There it goes, and it was yeah, the finish. It was, it was it, it totally, and you could be forgiven for forgetting how good Asuka is seen as they're not on <laughs> telly anymore. But there, how when were they ever going to get that amount of time to just have a match? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it was so good to see, and uh, particularly Asuka, she was sort of in the sort of uh, middle third. She was kind of largely the one in kind of control. Yeah, and I love her style of just the way she just stalks around really like because you think you associate women's wrestling I think a lot with pace and mm-hmm. kind of, you know, they, they do a lot they, they do a lot of that kind of quick comebacks and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. with her I love how she slows everything down and just picks apart and yeah. she just has this sort of foreboding style it's yeah. just and then just goes into these moments of like um, viciousness or whatever. I just I forgot how much I love just her her work. She's amazing. Even when it's yeah. even when it's quite basic, just sort of time wasting whilst there's an ad break. <laughs> yeah. Like it was just good stuff. Like yeah, yeah, it was great. It was really really cool stuff. Then we got that whole angle that we mentioned before with the women's war game match being announced, which was cool. And then we got Tyler Bate versus Cameron Grimes and his hat. Mm. Um, it is a cool hat. I like the hat. You're the only person that likes the hat. I kind of like the hat. I'm not against... I like hats, though. You're uninvited from any future NXT reviews. Um, this was a fun match, though. Really, really liked that. Uh, went through an ad break. There was the whole really cool spots back and forth, like both of them getting in like their signature offense, like Cameron Grimes doing his little backflip into the German suplex yeah. thing. It was awesome. Yeah, that was so smooth. So cool. Um, it was a really cool comeback from Bait where he did a really cool like uh, version of a kip-up where he went like straight-legged in the air and then went down and did a kip-up. Yeah, it was really yeah. cool. Well, this, um, is, this is, again, one of those... Uh, I, I, I get my notes out. Um, it's again one of those NXT, like, NXT star matches. Mm-hmm. That, I, I don't know why I keep calling that because I just feel like they're the, they've developed a cert, they had to develop a certain match style for the shorter time frame. So this yeah. this kind of fits into that. Like these are two guys who they've got stuff going on in the sort of lower part of the card. But uh, yeah, we've got time. Give them a match yeah. and just go go and just do your stuff at each other mm-hmm. and. Which will be entertaining. Yep. And we'll and then that's all we need from you. Thanks for coming. That was yeah. very entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was great. And guess what? You both look really good coming out yeah, of it. It was just yeah. I I I really I think I, okay. I understand why the hat doesn't help, even though I like it. <laughs> it's a bad hat. Uh, yeah. I I I like how Cameron Grimes is getting more and more time. Yes, me just too. Just generally speaking, yeah. and there is a rich history of in NXT. If you are just on TV. TV. If you are just now proper TV, now if you TV, if you yeah. are on TV regularly having matches of any description, generally speaking, you find yourself in a much better position a year later. Mm-hmm. And I think he is one of those, you know. And you'd put, you know, like, like Keith Lee has kind of gone up in that, like Dijakovic, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. Those there's a few of them now who are starting to just find their way slightly higher and higher and higher. And it's it's great booking for one because. Mm-hmm. You know, he he needs he needs the win. Yep. This is because of the angle that then happens. This is a perfect time for him to get that win. You know, it just again, it's simple, it's smart, it's a great match, a lot of fun. I like watching those two work any day of the week. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was great. Yeah. Um 
this lovely counter where Bait does his little dive into the ropes thingy and then Grimes hit the what's now called the collision course, which is the, the spinning Spanish fly crossbody Whatever thing. Whatever it is, but it's oh, awesome. It was cool. <laughs> um, then the finish comes where Bait's in control. He dives to the outside and then Killian Dane is in the crowd who's just like, because they had beef from the uh, from last week. Uh, and then Bait gets a little bit distracted. As he gets back in the ring, out of nowhere comes Cameron Grimes with the cave-in that double stumped to the chest uh, for the win, which was super cool. And then Killian Dane comes in afterwards, beats up Bait a little bit, does a massive cannonball into the steps with Bait there. Uh, and then he leans into him and just says, tell your friend Pete Dunn we have unfinished business. Mm. Cool. Liked it. Done. Super cool stuff. I'm a wrestler and I would like to have a fight. Yes. Thank you for coming. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Thank you. None of this is hard yeah. unless you make it hard. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we then get Undisputed Era and Rin and Leah warming up backstage. And then we got a video package for Angel Gaza, which was some really proper babyface stuff. Really? Yeah. Really yeah, yeah, babyface yeah. stuff in this because I thought he was a heel. I thought, or at least like a tweener. But this was like, you know what? I'm doing this for my family. You guys yeah. know my my uncle from, you know, back in the day in WCW and all that stuff. And he was wrestling doing this. I just want to make him proud. I'm like, what? Yeah. It'd be all like super cocky and arrogant. What's this? Yeah. It's, I def really it's definitely a, I would say, a full character change. Yes. Seems it. Yeah. It really seems it. So I'm going to be curious when he next comes out because I'm assuming he's going to be in line for a NXT Cruiserweight Championship match against Leo Rush because at least that's the direction they were going before. So like... When he comes out next, is he just going to be the same guy? Just being like, hey, I am just want to make my dad proud by tearing yeah. off my pants. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, still super handsome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I loved his character. I think oh, it's, I don't, so good. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I think it'd be a shame to lose that. Yeah. I hope he doesn't lose that. But also, I don't know what the point of this video package was if, if, it, if he doesn't. Yes. You know what I mean? So I do think, I mean, yeah, this is, this is a handbrake turn that they've changed the character now. Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> I want him to keep the old one. Uh, anyway, uh, then we get on to the main event of the night, which was Keith Lee and Matt Riddle versus the Undisputed mm -hmm. Era. Uh, this oh, was so fun. Because <laughs> this was roughly a 20, uh, 15 minute match or so. Mm -hmm. And about, like, like you mentioned to me earlier when we were watching it in the office, about 10 minutes of that was just Keith Lee and Matt Riddle just being yeah. awesome. I would, yeah, I would say most of this match is encompassed by two, essentially two very, very long hot tags. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's just one of, mainly Keith Lee, just being, just beating up the Undisputed Era. Yep. In various ways. Mm -hmm. And it was just some of the, the moves, not even necessarily like some of the really crazy stuff he's been doing with uh, Dajakovic, mm -hmm. but just like right at the very start, like doing like jumping over both of them and... You know, at one point he just does a he does a, at one point he does a moonsault from the second rope that just yep. is just super clean. Yeah, <laughs> like the uh, riddle nearly uh, kicked Carlo Riley across the room at one point <laughs> yeah. on the outside. Like it was just it was awesome, and yeah. it was also it was also peak undisputed. Mm -hmm. Who I love how they do that brilliant thing where like you only have to give them the tiniest margin, and they will cheat and win and run away with everything. Yes. It's it's a great thing that they, they've really... Because obviously because of their size, I think they've had to find how do we dominate. It's mm -hmm. like, well, because we know we, we can't... Yes, of course Keith Lee can beat us both up. Yeah. But what if he turns around for three seconds? Then what can we do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's it was really good work from them as well to just, first of all, accept the beating of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> and then also with the way it kind of all wrapped itself up. I just mm -hmm. think it was, it was so fun, this match. Yeah. And... Even right at the start, when they were just doing chops, and it was literally, you just had a chop from Matt Riddle, and then he held him to do another chop, and then he turns around and Keith Lee... Oh, <laughs> my God. Skadoosh! <laughs> straight on your chest. And then he and then he grabbed, oh. I think it was Kyle's second, grabbed his arms, and Kyle was just like, no! <laughs> you could just see Keith Lee winding up yeah. his hands, like, uh-oh. Kyle oh, O'Reilly's so facials are... Ne he's so Next funny. to none. He's so funny. Um, Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, I just thought, I just think, I mean, I'm coming at this in a partisan way because I just think Keith Lee should be, he should be a uber mega star. Yeah. And I, I just think he should be, and he should be that now. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that they're slowly building him up and he's getting a lot of time. And he's clear, he was clearly getting a lot of time in this match to just oh, yeah. be himself. And it was mm -hmm. great. Um, I just, 
I just thought the whole thing was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Riddle was surprisingly quiet in it, I thought, actually. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, he, subdued, he, hit, he hit a jackhammer right before he the break. He did hit a jackhammer. Which was furthering that whole Goldberg yeah. thing they got going on. And then he just great. For, uh, did a uh, sort of assay moonsault to the outside with, mm-hmm. a, with a twist in it. With that, a twist. It looked, but it looked like he decided to do the twist about halfway through the air. <laughs> It was just like, oh, okay, I could just do that. I, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was the from the, it did that great thing where I think Keith Lee and Matt Riddle are very good at this, which is like whatever the whatever energy the match starts at, they just sort of hold that yeah. until something kind of gets in the way. So if the match starts super quick, they just go go keep go, going. Go. It, yeah. It's yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, and then uh, finish came around when Colin Strong ran interference, classic Undisputed Era stuff. Uh, they do actually take both of them out, but then that runs a distraction. Uh, they get involved again. They take Riddle out, which then it means that uh, sorry, it was a Riddle that was left in the ring. Lee, I can't remember. No, they who beat it was. up Keith Lee. They beat up Keith yeah. Lee. Yeah, they hit the total elimination and they get the win. Um, and then the Undisputed Era beat down Lee after the match yeah. as well because they're heels. Uh, Daddy Champa comes out. Bloody love Daddy Champa. Comes out with his crutch and starts beating, wailing away on all of them, which was great. Uh, they stand tall in the ring afterwards. Riddle manages to hit his final flash knee, and Lee chucks Kyler Riley onto the rest of the Honest on the outside. And then Champa says, Goldie, you'll have to wait. Daddy's going to war. So a men's war games match as well, do you reckon? Yes, 100%. I'm kind of, I don't want to say disappointed, but I would rather they just do the women's one. Because Undisputed Era have been in every War Games match so far. I want them to not be in it for once and just have, let's just have the women do their thing. Because then we can have Champa versus Cole. We could have Riddle and Lee go for the tag titles and we've got more matches for the card. I don't necessarily think having two War Games matches on the same card is a good idea. Same thing as like at Hell in a Cell. I don't think having two Hell in a Cell matches on the same card is a good no, idea. I, I do, my only counter to that would be that I do think War Games is still fresh enough as a concept to the okay. To that. It's like you know, uh, but also I do think now that War now that the War Games pay per view exists, uh, and you've but and the Undisputed Era are a team of four. Mm-hmm. You can't not do it. Yeah, like, I don't like. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's it's a uh, as much as I do. I do. I would like to see that. I would like to see it used for. I would like to see a, a, basically like a, a men's version of what they did with the women's thing, which is just have a, a loose alliance of people and make and make that the war games. I would rather yeah. Undisputed Zero weren't in it. Yes, uh, and somehow the war games match actually had lots of stipulations as to who would they would then face for different titles. So mm-hmm. if they were somehow in their own feuds, and then it kind of. Yeah, okay. Whoever they were feuding with, I think that would be a that would just flesh out. I think more of the roster on the men's side, like they have with the women's. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know how. I think it's almost it would almost be a, a stranger decision not to do it. Like mm-hmm. you've got war games now, you've got two fours. Like yeah, you know what? You can't not do that. Then. Yeah, That'd be, that would be yeah. So I understand. I do. I, I do. I, I get where you're coming from. I think yeah. they sort of have to, don't they? So it seems like it's going to be undisputed era versus Champa Riddle Lee. And I don't know who else, because you'd think Gargano, but he's kind of tied up with Finn Balor. Mm-hmm. And considering we're going to have two War Games matches, we're going to need other matches to fill the card. So you'd assume Balor versus Gargano is going to be one of those matches. Yeah. So, so does this also mean that there's going to be no men's gold on the line in the whole of War Games? Yeah. Unless, are they going to put all the belts on the line somehow no, but in the, War Games? They like... could do that, but then also... I feel like it would get too convoluted yeah. if they do that. Like, oh, if you, if he pins this person, then they win this. It's like, well, that's not... So in that case, they'll have to keep Finn and Johnny separate for a big main event. Yeah. So that makes up for the fact there's no gold line, but there will be no gold on the line but for there, the men's side. There's going to be no gold at all, because oh, there's well, not well, even the women's the as well. Uh, they might do the... Cru- yeah, so they'll do a cruiserweight title match, which will probably be Gaza versus Rush, mm-hmm. probably. They'll do Balor versus Gargano, two War Games matches, and probably one other. Yeah. Which might be like a priest oh, done uh, type thing. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, pre, or, or pre, Dun, uh, Dun, Dun versus Dane. Dane. Yeah, yeah, Dun versus Dane. That's probably the card we're looking at in a minute, which is a good card. I wouldn't say it's the best one. However, the two War Games matches could be unbelievable. Yeah. Plus, Bala Gargano could be show stealer. I'm not a big fan of. Um, I don't, I don't want to see the main belt not being in main events too often. Yes. That is the slippery slope that the main roster got into. Mm hmm. Over the last fifteen years, yeah, <laughs> and as re- and as n- nowhere near 
in sight of getting out of that. Mm-hmm. So I hope I hope they I hope this is kind of they don't keep because they've done this once or twice now. They did it with Gargano and Champ. That was it when yeah. Alistair Black was Champ. Yeah. yeah. So I hope I hope they veer away from that as quick. This make this is fine now because Finn's hot. That's fine. But I, I I hope this very quickly becomes they need to get they need to get Adam Cole doing something where he's the main he's the big yeah. dog that they're coming after again. I know? think they might have the men's war games match as the main event though. So technically the yeah. title would be in it. Um, yeah. and then you just have Badder and Gargano as like the either the opener or like third match, I mm. reckon. That'd be cool. No, because then you probably want a war games match as the opener, so then you have as much space between the two war games so matches might, as so possible. Even, do you think they might open with the women's war games yeah, match? Yeah, I think so. And then close with the men's one, and then have Bala Gargano as the third match. Yeah. And then you have Dun Dane as like your second and yeah. the uh, sorry, your cruiserweight one is your second, and Dun Dane is your fourth. Uh, and it also makes sense because you've what well, either way, you've got to keep the two war games matches far apart from each other on the card anyway. Yes, you can't have them, no, you can't have them close at all. So, actually, yeah, having them kind of top and tail, yeah, yeah I think that will work. Um, anyway, oh, uh, so I just one one note I did, have, yes, actually I wanted to quickly bring up was I wrote down. Uh, and as a general thing, in NXT, the wrestlers really want to be a champion and they hold on to belts because they really want to keep them. It's a novel concept, but one that seems to be working. <laughs> and I do, and it's it's just one of those things where you, you notice it throughout the whole show that coded into every single match, you know, e- you know, other than obviously you've got specific feuds like the Killian Dane one, for example. Mm-hmm. But coded into everyone's performance on some level is the idea that they are su- somewhat working towards getting to a point where they can have a shot, of a, a shot at a title. Yeah. It's, ev- it's just, I know it sounds so <laughs> obvious, but that isn't something that happens a lot in other <laughs> parts of the company. That's, and just, it's, that's the ultimate goal, is you want to be know. a champ. That's the point of it yeah. people want to be the best if you told Cameron Grimes to go oh man we've got we've got a minute to fill before can you just go and do a promo he would talk about getting getting a shot at the North American title exactly say, or the cruise yeah. like that would be everyone's it's coded into everything I just think it's just one of those simple things that needs to be pointed out because it's just it's so simple and it's so effective and it allows all the all the talent to have enough breathing space their characters where they've got a simple motivation that they can mm-hmm. then develop that from I just think it's exactly yeah simple and brilliant NXT is very, very good. NXT is very, very good. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Um, yeah, but that is all we've got time for on this NXT review. Thank you very much, Simon, for filling in on this That's all right. episode. By default, right by again. Def- <laughs> by default. Love it. Uh, if you're watching, oh, of course you're watching on Catch Up because it's not a live stream. Uh, please press the videos that have just appeared on the desk right now to catch up with the latest Wrestle Talk things and please give us a like and a subscribe as well. I've been Chopper Pete Quinnell. This is Housemate Simon, and that was NXT.